Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Watches and Wealth where I make watch and wealth orientated videos. In this video I'll be showing you how to flip watches for a profit and some tips and tricks that have helped me along the way. This video is separated into three categories that I employ to make a successful flip with my watches, which is vision, knowledge and execution. In chronological order I'll be going through these sections. And if you're trying to turn this crisp $100 bill into many $100 bills, Stay tuned. This will make you a millionaire. All right, time to get serious. Okay, so you want to buy and sell watches. I think it's important to answer a few implied questions before you jump in on this endeavor. Question one. Are you planning on making short-term or long-term plays? Differing strategies apply for different time frames. If you're looking to buy a watch one day for $300 and sell it the next day for $350, this is a short-term play. And while you can make substantial money in the short term, it's a lot more actively involving than the long term. Long term plays are examples such as buying a $300 watch, storing it for two years, and potentially selling it for $450 plus profit. The price raising from external variables, which I'll elaborate and show examples for both in the knowledge section. They both have different approaches and whether you employ one or both, it's important to discern the difference. Now you know the time frame difference you could flip these watches at. The second question I'd ask you is, do you enjoy watches for watches? It's optimal to enjoy the whole process first, then make profits second. The majority of investors and people in the flipping culture are too fixated on making a profit that they're looking in the wrong areas and getting perpetually frustrated. If you're actively involved in the watch market and community, you'll be two steps ahead of someone motivated by money and market movers. I enjoy the craftsmanship, quality, branding and exclusivity that comes with wristwatches and I have intuitively better judgement and patience than someone looking at watches to solely make a profit. Majority of the success from watch flipping is being actively involved in the community and craft. You need to somewhat enjoy watches for watches to not miss a move and be ahead of the curve. So now you have a rough idea on the time frames and the optimal ways to go about this endeavour. The next section of this video is knowledge. Prices of watches fluctuate for many reasons. The more price fluctuates going up and down, the more profit you can maximise and capitalise on. A major foundational factor of this is supply and demand. Supply and demand's definition is the amount of commodity, product or service available and the desires of buyers for it, considered as a factor regulating its price. Supply and demand is a fluid idea and many factors affect the market. On average, if demand exceeds supply, prices tend to go up, whether the manufacturers capitalise on this or the secondary market does. If supply exceeds demand, prices tend to go down. That's why you see those percentage off advertisements and drop in price tags from the manufacturer or secondary market. The price equilibrium will deviate to whatever way the pendulum swings. The manufacturers will have a set price, however on the secondary market, the price equilibrium isn't a set price. If a watch sells for $100 to $150 here and there, the price equilibrium will swing to $125, but will always be fluctuating. It is important to note supply and demand affect differently the manufacturer and the secondary market. However, if you're flipping watches, you need to sell outside the source. These price fluctuations that the price equilibrium go through is what I call margin for profit. And this is what you will want to capitalize on to make money. It's the constantly shifting area between the lowest and highest purchase of the same watch, assuming that the watch is identical in terms of wear, operation and branding. I'll now give two examples on the short-term application and an example of the long-term strategies. In the short-term affordable example, let's say I'm scouting out a good-looking watch with great potential for profit on Chrono 24. My budget is $300. I see a Citizen NJO 147 selling for $300. I put the watch number into either Google or Krona24 search engine and see that the watch sells for $300 to $350 on average. I can capitalize on it being on the lower listed side of what it sells for. I buy it and my margin for profit is $50. You may be thinking, wouldn't the original seller just sell it for a maximum amount of $350? Well, here's where the seller could either be uneducated with what they have or in a rush to sell because they need money. Now I have a realistic profit margin of 
I received this watch two weeks later in the mail and eventually sell it for $350. Now I'm not taking into account tax or packaging variables. These are unique to each watch sale and you'll need to look at these for yourself because they will have an effect on your price and margin for profit. Now it's a lot of effort for buying, receiving, packaging, listing and selling for $50. Starting off this may be a worthwhile flip, however you'll need sufficient capital to take this to next levels. In the short term luxury budget example, let's say I'm scouting out a good looking watch with great potential for profit, once again, from Corona24, however my budget is $10,000. This price range has now elevated me into luxury watches, and my margins for profit are extensively higher. See your Oyster Perpetual Reference 116000 for $9,500. I see the average it sells for is $9,500 to $11,000. The margin for profit is significantly higher than the prior example of $50. The difference is now $1,500. The reasonings behind the margin for profit being so different is there isn't as much supply as the more available, cheaper watches. There is more demand due to exclusivity and branding and the true price isn't as refined to a point because it sells at a less frequent pace. So the fluctuations are decided more so by the sellers because there's excess demand. I buy this watch, enjoy it for a month and sell it for $11,000, giving me a profit of $1,500. These types of deals don't pop up every day. That's why you need the sufficient capital waiting so you can capitalize on these sales whenever it's happening. These examples are for the short term and different price ranges and the ideal finds you want to look for. Of course, prices go down. Maybe you overpaid and now stuck with a watch that's worth $300, but you paid $350. It's only a loss if you sell and here's where long term passive plays come into play. In the long term, the idea is to choose a watch that isn't massively manufactured, has a good reputation for quality and longevity, and the manufacturer has good prospects ahead. Some examples such as Rolex, Omega, and Seiko. If you're gonna put these watches in a safe for a while and wear them rarely, aim for more long-term watch designs such as mechanical manual and automatic watches. Quartz watches aren't ideal, nor are electronic watches. Exterior variables that could affect the watch price are discontinuation, time of year, utility, demand spikes, and supply loss. If you don't want to be constantly involved in the watch community and market, use this strategy to set and forget. You won't have to micromanage your investments and you can sleep well knowing your watch is secure and you have delegated authority to a persistent rising watch world. Just remember to be smart about your investments and buy watches with full box and papers if you can. Personally, I like to play the long game with my Rolexes. I paid $5,950 for my Oyster Perpetual uh, two years ago. During this period, Rolex gained notoriety and branding rep, demand went up, and this specific model got discontinued. This was a supply shock, and the price subsequently went up. That Oyster is now worth $11,000 to $11,500 giving me a profit of $4,000 to $5,000 if I choose to sell. The final section of this video is execution. Execution is having sufficient capital to invest and the platform to do it. Also the courage to pull the trigger on the watch. There are many different ways to buy watches and I'll list the main ones. Grey markets, pre-owned sellers, auctions, watch boutiques and convention centers. Stay away from the black market. The way I personally buy watches is through Chrono24, eBay, or watch boutiques. Be knowledgeable, curious, and courageous in the watch world, and you can make profits easy. And that summarizes my video on how I make money buying and selling watches. If you have any constructive criticism, leave it in the comments. I'm still learning. I appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you for watching.